Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our Novich webinar episode on V-Ray for Modo, introducing V-Ray's rendering power to Modo's signature workflow. Chaos Group, Kalina Panteleva, will demonstrate how V-Ray's highly optimized adaptive ray tracing technology complements and expands upon Modo's signature workflow, introducing a complete interactive lighting, shading, and rendering toolkit to Modo using professionals. Uh, today's presenter, Kalina, joined Chaos Group CG team in 2012, and since then she's been actively, actively working with V-Ray for Maya and V-Ray for 3ds Max. She has more than eight years experience in graphic design, photography, and visual arts. Before joining Chaos Group, Kalina worked in creative for the, the, for the advertising industry. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do in Noveg. Noveg is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's needs. So if you want to get your V-Ray for Modo, come to our website. It's very easy to find and we have the best price guaranteed. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, please visit to the Noveg blog and follow us on Facebook or Plus or Twitter. Coming up next week, RealFlow Cinema 4D, a great new workflow for fluid simulations. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded live, so if you want to rewatch this or any webinar episode in our collection, just head on over to Noveg's YouTube and Vimeo channels. Great, and now without further ado, I will make Kalina the presenter and she will show you her screen and the amazing V-Ray for Modo. Take it away, Kalina. Thank you so much, Barbara, and a big thank you to Novaj for having me. Uh, and hello to everybody. I'm very happy to be here today showing you one of the newest additions to the V-Ray family, V-Ray for Modo. So I hope uh, you're interested and in the end, we'll leave a few moments for a few minutes for questions. So any question you may have, you can type it in and in the end, we'll take some time to answer that, those. Besides this, in this presentation, I'll try to show you as much of V-Ray for Modo as possible, but have in mind that this is a completely new release. This is the first official version of V-Ray for Modo, so there is a lot of stuff. Basically, all of the years of development of V-Ray are now in Modo, and today we'll try to go over as many as possible. In the end, I'll show you a few links that you may find interesting if you want to know more for additional information. So, let's start. Modo, V-Ray for Modo was a beta version. It was launched on SIGGRAPH last year. This was the first time we showed V-Ray for Modo. And since then, I hope that you had some time to test the beta version. I hope you had some time to make your own mind about it. But now it's already official. It's out there, so you can go, test the demo version, check out all the information on the internet, and then hop on to Novage's website where you can get the full V-Ray for Modo. So, I'll try to go over everything. I know that maybe some of you have been beta testers, but for, for others, I believe it's a completely new software. So I'll try to cover as much as possible. First thing you'll notice when you install V-Ray for Modo is that it is seamlessly integrated inside Modo's interface. This means that Whenever you are a native Vray user or a native Modo user, you find the beautiful integration of those two combined. So the workflow, the introduction, won't be something scary, it won't be something that you need to spend hours and hours reading about. The approach would be very Modo native, Modo intuitive, with a lot of cool Vray features. All of this is easy to use, and it all depends on your personal approach, whether you just like to go on click, click, render and get the results, or you want to go very deep into the settings and have the full control over your rendering. This 
is all based on the production power of V-Ray. So the same core, the same V-Ray algorithms and mathematics that I have no idea about are integrated inside this version. So the engine the sampling is the same as V-Ray for Max, Maya, Nuke, you name it. Let's see what I mean by this integration and I'll go in model. Here it is. And on top here in the layouts panel, you see two new ones which appear when you install V-Ray. They're automatically added, so the installation will be like next, next, finish, and when you open Mono, you have those two. The one is the renderer V-Ray, where you can see inside Mono integrated the V-Ray frame buffer, where we will see all of our rendering and on the sides the typical model settings, properties, panels, materials and items list. Next one will be the V-Ray frame buffer where you have the full V-Ray frame buffer which is a tool on its own. We'll take a few moments going over this one but now let's back, let's go back into render V-Ray. Besides this on top you see a few additional buttons, those allow you to render, show the V-Ray frame buffer if you want to undock it, if you want to use it as a separate window, maybe if you're working on two screens this would be very useful, but in my opinion the nature mode approach would be with the docking which results in this beautiful user interface. Then we have a few settings options Basically, those are divided into main controllers for V-Ray. So with the default one, we have the overall rendering controllers. Then we have the global illumination. Next to this, the RT, the real-time render engine of V-Ray. The render elements, or some of you may be familiar with those like render passes, or but all of those here allowing you to add as many as you like to your rendering and a few additional properties which we'll go over. And first thing we need to understand is rendering in V-Ray for model. So like I said this is based on V-Ray 3.4 core meaning that all of the speed optimizations are created for V-Ray are in Modo. You have image-based sampling, you have the V-Ray denoiser which we'll see today allowing to create much more beautiful images in less time. You have for sampling options, you have the bucket and progressive. Main differences between those two being that the bucket, we have one core of your CPU working on a bucket and then proceeding to the next. And with the progressive, we have the overall, the, the whole image being rendered from the moment you press render and getting better over time. We have wonderful solutions for VR rendering, virtual reality rendering. So with just a few clicks of V-Ray, you can load, you can render a whole sphere, um, cube camera allowing you to just plug the image inside an Oculus Rift or a Samsung device or any other you prefer and check out the 360 view. Then we'll go into RT rendering, real-time rendering, CPU and GPU based. To be very clear, V-Ray by default allows you to use both options. So no need for additional plugins or additional changes. Depending on what you like to use, you can render CPU or GPU. For now, the GPU supports around 90% of V-Ray and we are always working on improving this. So the hardware depends on you. And then, of course, speaking of hardware, distributed rendering, if you have the ability, the possibility to render using a render farm, or more than one machines, whatever it's in your office or hoping at home, 
the array for model allows you to use many machines to render the image much faster. Let's go in mono and check all of this. I've prepared a demo scene and I'll go into the M options where we'll check the different image sampling um, options. By default, I think it's adaptive, so let's render adaptive. This adaptive would be the bucket rendering. And now we see the bucket rendering in the image. Then, after the bucket rendering is finished, we'll go into progressive rendering. Have in mind that the results for bucket and progressive are the same. You have the same control over the global illumination. You have the same control over uh, V-Ray. The difference is that with the bucket rendering, as you can see from here, we are waiting for every bucket to finish rendering to see our image. While with progressive, V-Ray will start with one quality and over time it will get better and better progressively, as the name suggests which makes it wonderful not only for previewing, but especially if you're not so much into settings, you don't need the deep control, you can control the image just by the time you have for rendering. And now our image is rendered. Just below you can see the render stamp allowing us um, to see the exact render time, in our case one minute and four seconds. So this is one option of rendering using buckets. I'll delete the image so we can check out the progressive and from the M option, sample type, progressive. Here, basically, we do not need to be concerned with any settings. You can just change the render time maximum if you want to limit it or the noise threshold if you don't want to limit by quality. But besides this, if I click render, Vire will calculate the global illumination and start rendering the image. You can see that it starts with lower quality and over time it gets better and better and better. It will continue rendering uh, till the moment when it reaches either the time limitation or the quality limitation. Or of course, you can just press the stop button whenever you're happy. Personally, I use escape because it works the same as the uh, stop button. <laughs> and here we have our image. This is the result for 32 seconds, but if you leave it more, of course, the quality will get better. To those of you who are specifically interested in the quality of the subdivisions of lights and materials, in V-Ray for Modo, this is done by using the minimum shading rate on top here. Basically, the higher number, the more subdivisions that the lights and materials will have, meaning that the quality will be better, of course, for the sake of rendering time. And opposite, lower values will give you faster rendering, but the quality of the materials and lights will be a little lower. Experiment with those because, of course, for every scene, they'll give you different results. And now we'll start with rendering with the RT engine, which is the interactive engine, engine of V-Ray. The RT is powered up just by pressing this play button on top here. On the CPU, the RT will give us the same results as the progressive rendering as the bucket rendering. It supports everything that is supported on the, in the progressive and in the bucket mode. So, why do we have progressive and if it's the same as RT? Well, with the progressive image time for you have the global illumination control. So there you can pick the global illumination engines, a V-Ray, while with the RT on the CPU it's always brute force, brute force. From there on, Again, this one, if I leave it over time, the image will get better and better. This is not a preview rendering. 
It can be used as a preview, of course, it's very fast, but it can also be used as a full-blown production render. So if you like what you see on the RT, no need to pre-render, no need for anything, you can just stop, save the image and use it. Another great thing about it though is the fact that it's interactive. So I can move around in the scene and see the results instantly. Same goes for changing illumination, changing materials and everything. The RT automatically updates and shows me the results. This is one of the things in Vera I cannot go without and believe me, in an everyday workflow, the possibility to see as you render is something that cannot be... I cannot live without it, honestly. <laughs> okay. Like we said, this one also works for illumination. So whatever lights you may have in the scene, like in this case we have a sunlight, you can change those, move them around, illuminate as we go. You notice in today's presentation that I'll be rendering on the RT quite a lot, so everything we see, we'll see it in RT in real time. And like I said, this is on the CPU, VRA for model also supports GPU rendering. How we can render on the GPU with the VRA RT? I'll go into quite a heavy scene to demonstrate that. So it will take a few moments for VRA to load the scene, for model to load the scene. So here we have our motorbike and this is quite a large model. And let's start rendering our team on the GPU. On top we have V-Ray and from there you see Start RT GPU CUDA. CUDA is for NVIDIA graphics cards and optimized language to render on those. Like I said, this is quite a heavy model, so a few seconds loaded are perfectly normal. Why GPUs? To those of you who are not familiar, basically a GPU provides us with a lot of speed. Yes, they are on the expensive side if you uh, on the expensive side if you want to build up a render farm using GPUs, but the speed advantage they provide may come in handy in many situations. Like I said, V-Ray is both CPU and GPU, so you don't need to make any decisions when you get V-Ray for model. So here we have our rendering, again like the CPU, interactive and you may notice quite fast. Let's zoom in a bit. I'll use this scene to show you a few additional features of the V-Ray frame buffer combining with the V-Ray RT and those can be seen on top. They work both CPU and GPU so no worries there. You can go and select a region and in this way V-Ray will render only in the selected region allowing you to see more detail or just check how things are going in this place. So at any point you can just enable this one, drag a region and we will start rendering in this region. Another one that is very useful not only for checking out details but if you also if you want to point more samples in a specific region is the track mouse option. Again on the top shelf of the V-Ray frame buffer, next to, the, mm, next to the region rendering you have track mouse. 
Now VRA is rendering where my mouse is. Like I said, it not only allows you to, to get more detail in a specific region and check stuff, you can also combine it to the, with the whole rendering for more samples in a specific region. I hope you can notice how around my mouse the image is getting much more clear while the other regions are not being rendered. If I move my mouse, you can see Puree starting to render there. Just be careful not to forget that you have this one on because we've all been in a situation where we've got track mouse on and V-Ray was rendering just around the mouse. <laughs> That's why you have this very useful notice right here on top. So, this is the GPU rendering of V-Ray. I suggest you experiment with both as in different scenes they may work to your advantage. Okay, I'll close this scene since it's quite heavy and we don't need it anymore. And proceed to the next part, which is of course illumination. Vray for model has full support for model whites, which automatically when you create them as a model light are calculated as a V-ray light. This is very easy as you just illuminate the way you would normally with model. Then we have the global illumination control, which basically uh, support V-Ray global illumination calculation methods like light cache, irradiance map, and of course we have brute force. This uh, V-Ray for model has support for the V-Ray Sun and Sky system, which as the name suggests is a wonderful representation of the real world Sun and Sky. And this is combined with the physical camera, which is V-Ray's way of creating a DSLR camera, a photo camera inside 3D space. So those of you who are familiar with photography will be very familiar with the physical camera. For the others, it's very intuitive and very easy to control. One question we get a lot is why V-Ray lights? Why it's so important to use a V-Ray light? V-Ray lights are based on a world illumination, as well as V-ray materials. The V-ray materials are created to reflect, to refract, as real-world materials would. So the combination of those two, of the V-ray lights and the V-ray materials, gives you the most accurate physical results. Don't be frightened by the word physical in this case. You can fake it as any way you like it, as or, uh, in order to get the rendering you want. But when it comes to realism, to the real world in virtual universe, those two V-ray lights with V-ray materials give us most accurate results. So let's go in model and check out what V-ray for model has to offer as illumination. And maybe you've guessed it, the next step would be materials. Okay, uh, again, Rendering RT, I'll use the CPU. I already have some illumination in this scene. When I zoom out, you can see a few lights. And those two, uh, those are also visible in Item, items list of model as well as the shader tree, you have the same lights inside. So from here we can select them and on the right you see that the second panel uh, tab is V-Ray light. From here if you can do additional controls you can use inside your uh, scene, inside the light. When you create the light from add item light, I'll pick a directional one as I want to show you how the sun is created, it is automatically added to the V-Ray light properties. So let's see the sun and I'll disable the other lights. Okay, 
we can just hide them uh, and we have the directional light. You may notice that uh, no matter the fact that I hit the light, there is, some still, there is still some illumination in the scene. This is because of a few environment overrides them in this scene. So if I go into environment, you notice that we have a background texture, a global illumination texture, and a reflection texture which are providing us with this sort of illumination. Let's go into this white, which will be our uh, directional sunlight. Basically, you just need to create directional light and in the P plus button on top here, you have add V-ray sun sky to select the directional lights. Click. And now the bright, bright illumination of the sun is shining on our scene. Why uh, is it so bright? Because as the name suggests, it's a representation of the real world sun and sky, and this is also a high intensity source of illumination. Then if we go into the environment panel, Okay, from here you can add the sun and uh, the sky option of V-Rain. In my case, since they are overwritten, I can just delete those. and uh, use their information to add sun and sky, okay? And that's why you don't create overrides for your scene when you want to show sun and sky, <laughs> okay? But basically, you just need to point V-Ray to the directional sun light. From there on, have in mind that the sun and sky light supports the HOSEC sky model, which is the newest V-Ray sky model allowing you for better, more realistic representation of the real world sun and sky. Moving on, I'll go into materials. And like I said, V-ray sun and sky, uh, V-ray lights work best with V-ray materials. We have quite, 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 quite a few uh, added inside uh, V-ray for model and they work beautifully with the model layer uh, editor with the shader tree. Um, just a few examples here and I'll try to go over as many as possible. Okay. In model we go and close the scene okay, and open the scene uh, allowing us to see better the materials. I've, of course, created a simple one, but have in mind that all of the materials we've seen are V-Ray materials, just in this case. Basically, this is our scene, and in order to give you a better understanding of the materials, I'll select the region so we see what's going on in there. There, from there, pointing to the shader tree, we have quite, quite, quite a few materials already created, and you can see the V-Ray logo used in those. From there on, if you want to create, you can just go and assign them to the geometry, or if you go to Add Layer, then you see the V-Ray materials. We have from the basics, the materials, you see two-sided material, blend material, curb paint, fast SSS, which is beautiful for skin, and I'll demonstrate this in a moment. Light material, the standard v material, which is pretty good for all kinds of metals, plastics, uh, glass, and so on. 
skin material, another SSS subsurface scattering material, wonderful for creatures and uh, not only wax, all kinds of subsurface scattering materials. The stochastic flakes are very interesting material allowing you to create um, flake textures, flake materials, wonderful for car paints, product design, so on and so forth. By the way, this one also works wonderful for snow. So, you can start experiment with winter scenes. And besides this, we have a volumetric material, white select render element allowing you for post-production to take the information from a specific light and use it for compositing later and quite a few additional V-Ray textures. The approach using those would be the standard model approach, just layering and masking those to create the results you want to use. In my case, let's check uh, select the material from here or we can uh, create a new one. Other layer, material, V-Ray material and assign it to the geometry. Okay. Now you see that here this one is just the blank gray material from on top of which we can start building and creating more. Of course to work with diffuse color Okay, uh, this one is not signed here. We can go and create another one. Oh. Okay, so from here, this uh, it's this one, sorry. We can go and add layer, V-Ray material, V-Ray material. From there on, work with it uh, as a normal V-Ray material. Those of you who have worked with uh, in additional softwares, will be very familiar with the approach. So we have diffuse color options and of course we can add reflections, control those with um, glossiness, let's lower this one to create a glossy effect and Fresnel of course if you want to work with uh, metal-like structures. Basically for metals, Fresnel over 10 will uh, do you good and if I make the diffuse black, you can see this metal appearing. And of course, if you want to make this uh, glass material, we can go with refraction and give it a full effect shadows for more realistic results. And now our object is basically glass. So this is just the introduction to the V-Ray materials, but I strongly suggest uh, whenever you have the time, go and experiment with uh, testing a few of those on top. Okay. Adding a car, pine, car paint material. Uh, if Another interesting one, you can see the flakes, here they're quite, quite big, but if we uh, change the size or the scaling of the texture, we can go with lower flakes. All of this depends on your geometry, I just want to give you a few examples of materials in V-Ray. I've pre-rendered a few options, uh, I can show you those. Uh, by the way, I'm using the render history to show you my previous renders. It can be accessed from the H in the V-Ray frame buffer. And here you see all the images saved on my hard drive. This is wonderful not only for comparing results, also for keeping track of your progress or just initial library of the images you may need for a specific project. This is the metal material which we started with. Experimentations with plastics, refractive plastic or frosted glass, whatever you prefer to call it. And these are just a few examples. 
I want to open a scene and show you some subsurface scattering. Since I know a lot of people use uh, V-Ray for mo uh, use model, and I hope V-Ray for model as well for creating beautiful characters, very cute, very wonderful, and I think that the subsurface scattering material would be a huge advantage in this case. Okay. Let's uh, render this one. Subsurface scattering material also works on RT, real time, so whenever you make the change, you can adjust it in real time. And here we have our trolls. I don't know if you remember those toys. They were very popular with children in Bulgaria. But uh, most importantly, in the rendering case, you can see the subsurface scattering happening. Another thing you may notice, I think it's quite, quite visible, is the hair. V-Ray for Modo also has hair support and a beautiful material, the V-Ray hair tree material used for creating uh, more realistic shading for hair. Here it's quite uh, specific when it comes to shading. I believe those of you who have tried know that the right translucency to, uh, for hair is quite tricky to get. With the V-Ray hair material, it's a bit, bit easier. I have selected the girls here so we can go and we have a texture on top. This is the transmission hair. But I can uh, remove this texture. Okay. Delete. If I delete the textures, now the color of the hair is only controlled by the by the material, so we can uh, go and experiment with this a bit more. So you can see how easily in real time you can change uh, the shaders and change the overall appearance of your rendering. I hope this is quite a useful approach for those of you who are into character design. And I'll continue with a more interesting specific features. So let's go with... an optimization made to, let's say, make your life easier. Let's render this one. And we have this beautiful, almost advertising-ready shot of this chocolate bar. Let's check out the materials. Uh, do you hear me because I think... Yes, we can hear you. Oh, sorry, uh, there was some notices here. <laughs> so, continuing with our uh, chocolate bar, you can see uh, if we go to the... Uh, you can see that the edges are quite, quite sharp. So what we can do here is use an option called uh, rounded corners where we can basically change the uh, geometry without remodeling it. This will be an effect done in uh, render time where we will create a bump-like structure. Okay. So basically what we need to do is find the material for our chocolate, which in this case is the blend material, 
and from here you can see the option code V-Ray material command. Here you have a few additional options, but the one I want to show you in this case is the rounded edge. This allows you to create beveling-like effect in a render time. How we can do this is basically I'll select the region, so we see clearly there, and just add a value for the rounded edges. Uh, have in mind this is in uh, real world values, so the effect created should be uh, corresponding to the geometry. In this case, you can see that values like 5 millimeters are way, way, way too big. So what we can do is go with 1 millimeter for the case of our chocolate bar. And here you see the beveling happening in render time. The geometry is the same. It's very sharp. You can cut yourself uh, while trying to bite into this one. Well, in render time, we see the beautiful beveling of the edges. This is done thanks to the rounded edges white option. Um, and the beautiful thing is that you can control it to be convex and concave, convex only, or concave only. This means, speaking simply, will it be only on top or inside of the edges as well? Great thing is that this is interactive, so you don't need to go back, bevel the geometry, re-render, and so on. You can fix it as you go. And I'll go concave only, so you can see it inside the edges only as well. And I think this will be a very useful optimization. If you want to check it out, of course. Continuing with specific uh, and interesting approaches, I want to show you volumetric rendering in V-Ray for Modo, and I've opened my scene. Here you can see that the only object in this scene, just below, I'll just close the chocolate bar, is the, uh, is the volume grid. Basically, you can add a V-Ray volume grid from add item, V-Ray Geometry, V-Ray Volume Grid. From there on, you can go inside the Volume Grid and just load an Open VDB shader or a Phoenix Aura shader. And there on, we have volumetric rendering in V-Ray for model. Now you can see this fire um, rendered again I'm using the RT. Great thing is that after you've load, loaded the uh, volume grid, in the volume grid, the volumetric shader, you can go and, for example, change its color. I don't know why, but uh, when I, whenever I change a color, I always make things pink. <laughs> so, you can go and change the color, you can also change the luminance gradient, allowing you to have um, different luminance going on inside of this a volume grid inside of our fire. This is wonderful for many, many situations. And great thing here is that you can uh, also use the volume grid for illumination and you can uh, allow it to light from fire, enable, enable lighting. Have in mind this will um, maybe affect your render time, but the results can be quite, quite impressive when it comes to illuminating using volume grid. Another thing which you can use as a volumetric is the V-Ray uh, environment fog, which is, as the name suggests, an overall volumetric, so it will be all over the scene. So we can go add item, V-Ray atmospherics, V-Ray environment fog. It is also rendered in real time, so we'll see the results.
you can see it down below now it's very dense and not so high so what we can do is change the distance which is basically the distance between the particles inside the fog and bigger values will give us less dense fog and we can make it much higher because it's only one meter now and now and we want to see it in the whole scene Keep in mind that since the fog is an overall effect, it affects the whole scene, sometimes it can take a moment or two to calculate the fog inside the scene. Okay, so let's go with even a higher value than this for the height and a little less density. We can also control the color and make it look more like this. And here you see the volume fog. So this is one more approach that it may take your images, let's say, to the next level or give them some depth, give them some interesting additions. Okay, and let's continue. Out. Let's see what's going on in the PowerPoint presentation. Volumetrics. I think I spoke about those. And we can continue with the next one. Dynamic geometry. Basically, uh, V-Ray for model supports V-Ray proxies, which are a wonderful geometry optimization allowing you to save the geometry as a proxy on your hard drive. You have a low poly preview which you can move around, scale, position, shader, and in render time you have the beautiful detailed geometry of the proxy. Besides this, you can also go with scene exchange which basically allows you to export V-Ray scene from any other platform that supports V-Ray and load it in model and there work with it, change its illumination, change its uh, shaders, the possibility is quite endless. What I forgot to mention for the proxies is they work beautifully with uh, replicators, with models, replicators, and you can um, populate your scene with those. The Lambic hair support you saw in the moment when I showed you skin shading and hair shading. So you have a Lambic hair support loaded as a V-Ray proxy node, displacement support, and the V-Ray Clipper. What is the V-Ray Clipper? The V-Ray Clipper is a wonderful tool allowing you to cut through geometry in render time. I want to show you this one since I think it's quite, quite the useful tool. Let's open a scene. Basically, the clipper is a non-destructive uh, node allowing you to uh, cut through geometry in a render time. The beautiful thing is that you don't need to destroy the geometry you've created. You don't need to change it in any way. This makes it very easy to use, makes it very easy to use in animation. and especially uh, useful when you want to show how something is created, create that sort of a uh, view, or uh, how something is built. Okay, let's again load the scene because I closed it in a second, try, trying to clear my workflow. Kalina, is that okay while we wait if I ask you a couple of questions? Uh, yeah, of course or it's one. okay. I'm yeah. Just in, yeah, ask me a question, of course. I've just opened so many scenes that it's... That's all right. That's we, we can yeah. wait. In the meantime, I have a question. Can one halt a progressive render, save it, reload, 
and then uh, um, a later time continue with it? Okay, uh, this is something we are working on and it's very much requested, but it's something that I'm hoping in f the future uh, will be there. We are com working on it for now. Okay, cool, it's thank not, you. Yeah. I'll continue with this and in the end we'll have more questions? Sure, go ahead. Great. Sorry, but I'm opening so many C's that at one point my computer starts going like, nope, stop doing that. <laughs> okay, so here we have this engine model and uh, let's start rendering in order to show you the V-Ray Clipper. Again, I'll be using the RT and we'll interactively cut through the geometry. So here we have our object and let's add a clipper from add items, V-Ray geometry, V-Ray clipper. Okay, we can drag it at any point in the scene and automatically you see it added in the scene. Now this is the clipper node, you can see that inside the scene the geometry is intact it's beautifully working and there is uh, no need to go and remodel anything. From there on we can start and move this around. So now if I move it, we'll see in render time the change happening. Let's rotate it so we see the cut for ourselves. And here we see the cut. From there on the V-Ray Clipper properties can be found on the right you have the V-Ray Clipper. We have the effect lights or not effect lights, whatever you decide. An interesting thing here is the use object material option. By default the V-Ray Clipper uh, can be assigned any material you like. You can just take it as a normal piece of geometry and assign a material to it. But additional thing you can do is use the object material. Let me click on this one. And by doing that, whenever the clipper cuts, it will show me the geometry material there. So if it's metal, it will show me metal material. If it's plastic, it will show me plastic material. This is quite, quite an easy thing we can do. But one of my favorites, and I think everybody's favorite, is that we can assign a custom mesh as a clipper. So we can see here that this clipper, it's a plane. We can go and make it any piece of geometry we like. So let me just unhide the sphere. This is just a standard geometry sphere. If I move the clipper away, you can see the piece of geometry here. What we can go is select the clipper, go into clipper from here, pick the piece of geometry we would like to use, which in this case is the clipper sphere. And now the V-Ray clipper will be using this sphere to cut through the geometry. And again, if we move the sphere, if we rotate it, it will be interactively shown in the RT and the geometry will be safe and sound. You can have more than one clippers in a scene, you can mix and match them in any way and also, let me just select the clipper again, you can add exclude options, clipper exclude from here and in this way you can mix and match as many clippers as you like. Going again, to back, back, again back to rendering. Final touches as we are going near the end of our presentation. A few interesting final touches in V-Ray for Modo. The denoiser, the render elements and the frame buffer. Quickly back into Modo and 
And let's open this beautiful beer bottle scene. It's evening in Bulgaria, so maybe for you in the States, it's a bit early for beer. But let's check the scene. <laughs> okay, so here we have our uh, scene. And on top, from the Render Elements panel, tab, let's call it, you can see how many Render Elements we have included inside this one. So now, if we start rendering, all of those Render Elements will be automatically, as we render the Beauty Pass, rendered, and we can use them later for compositing, for additional touches, or for debugging your scene if something is bothering you. But an interesting one is the denoiser. What we can do here is select the render op uh, option, go into VRA main, and here you see denoiser post process. You just click enable here and automatically VRA loads all of those render elements needed for denoising. And when we start rendering, after the rendering is done, we can denoise. Why do we need denoising? Basically, it gives us better results for less time, because as a post-process, we can go with less time for rendering and then a few additional seconds for denoising. And why I say seconds? The V-Ray denoiser is GPU accelerated. So whatever kind of a GPU you have, doesn't matter if it's a very expensive graphics card it's dedicated especially for rendering or if it's just a small uh, chip allowing you just to run the basics. V-Ray will take advantage of this uh, GPU and it will use it for denoising, giving you much, much faster denoising than uh, normally. So basically, whenever you're happy with your rendering, if you want to cut some time, if you want to have a more polished image, anything you need, you can use denoising and do that as post process. Great thing is that while we ready noises, it takes information, it has the information for the details, so it denoises in a way that it will not destroy the detail in your rendering, it will not destroy your textures, it will not uh, ruin everything you've created. Also, great thing is that you can update it afterwards, so when you're finished rendering, you're finished denoising, if you want to add more denoise or less denoise, you don't need to pre-render. You just need to update it, which I'll show you in a moment. And uh, another great thing is that V-Ray for model also comes with an additional denoise tool, which is a standalone tool. You can find this one uh, while we render. I'll show you where you can find it. Okay, Windows, Program Files, Chaos Group, V-Ray. Modo, Bin, here you have a few additional tools which come as part of V-Ray. When you install V-Ray, you have those. Check them out. I don't have, unfortunately, the time to show you each individual one. Some good ones here. And one of them is the V-Denoise tool, which allows you to do some denoising on, uh, in a standalone mode. And best thing is that this works for denoising animation. So you have denoising where V-Ray not only takes one frame, but takes the frames before and after to give you seamless denoising without flickering. I'm so excited about this because the results are amazing and in the end I'll give you a few links so you can check some denoising results. Okay, so now we see we have some uh, the rendering, it reached some point, this is progressive rendering. So it reached some point, we can leave it for the time. It has 18 more seconds to reach it, no, to reaching its time limit. I'll just leave it to this. And you can see the render element on the left. So here we have the V denoise render element. Okay. And we'll go there in a second. I hope you saw the V-ray denoising part. And now this is the beauty pass. 
If I go in video noise, this is the denoised image. So, just with a few additional seconds, you can see the difference, especially visible in the depth of field, we have the denoiser. Like I said, you can update it afterwards. If you are not happy with the denoising here, you can go in the render, VRA main, denoise post process, and now it's mild, which is the lowest. We can go with strong update. Just a few seconds for VRA to denoise. And you see the result in the denoise render element. So this can be quite, quite useful, I'm sure, and it can also be beautifully combined with a few additional options of the V-Ray frame buffer. Like I mentioned, we have the render elements, they are calculated the same time as the beauty pass. And we also have a few beautiful features of the V-Ray frame buffer. I'll go into the frame buffer tab. Here you have a few color correction options which you can use inside of Modo. Imagine it as a small version of Photoshop inside your Modo where you can, for example, change the exposure as a post process, change the white balance, hue saturation, color balance where you have some deep control over shadows, mid-tones and highlights. Also curve options to all lookup tables. If you're working in a big process, if you want to experiment with additional softwares. And on the far right, we also have some elements, uh, some, uh, sorry, boom, glare, lens effects. So you can also work with those as a post process and add an additional piece of glam <laughs> to your rendering. You can see that I don't need to pre-render, I can adjust all of those as a post process. So you can be beautifully combine all of this denoising, frame buffer color correcting, lens effects in V-Ray for Moto. And I think this is a good ending. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't even have time to go over everything because, believe me, there is a lot, lot more going on in here. Now, take a few moments for questions, but before that, if you have any questions about availability, pricing, and so on, check out Novage's website. They're wonderful and they give you all the information you need. Besides this, for V-Ray for Model itself, I strongly suggest you go to YouTube, Here's Group TV. You know how this one goes. Like and subscribe. And from there on, we have a whole playlist called V-Ray for Mode. There you see detailed videos showing quite, quite a few features. Quite uh, some of the features I showed today, some we didn't have the time. But check out those videos. They're like short tutorials almost. There on. VRA for Modo you can also find on v-ray.com Modo where you can get more information as an overview. Chaos Group page where you can check out the demo version. Chaos Group VRA Modo and the official help index. Docs.chaosgroup.com. I'll give you the links again in a moment, but here you have all of the features, all of the little things explained very detailed. With some examples, with some screenshots. So I think this can be quite uh, the useful information. Here are the links. Screenshot your screen <laughs> and go subscribe to the YouTube channel, join KS Group and go to the Veg page as well. So thank Barbara? Thank you, Kalina. Wow. Thank you for the great resources. Um, I hope everybody is a screenshot, uh, using the screenshot, or they can come back to our new YouTube channel. Just search for Novage and the video will be posted there and it will stay there for the eternity of Google, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, 
<laughs> and by the way, sorry for everybody for a few technical difficulties we had today. They were very unfortunate, but I hope this did not ruin your experience. Your webinars are always so delicious, <laughs> not just because of the <laughs> rendering <okay>. here. <laughs> But, okay, we have a couple of questions. Can V-Ray for model support network rendering? Yeah, distributed rendering absolutely supported in V-Ray for model. Uh, in the Chaos Group TV and the YouTube channel, there is a video for distributed rendering specifically fully supported. Perfect. Uh, you have an extensive material library on your website. Are these... Uh, presently functional presets also in Modo? Uh, honestly, I haven't checked that one. Um, thank you for the question. I'll definitely check it. I'm not completely sure because they are V-Ray mats which need to be loaded in a specific loading system, but... Uh, yeah, I haven't checked that. Sorry. That's all that. right. That's all right. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, and some, you know what I'll do? Yes. I'll check this one and write it as a comment on the YouTube video. <laughs> okay. Yeah. When you post that, I'll write it as a comment down what? below. So. Okay. Good. Yeah, do yeah. that. And um, um, also, somebody who's, uh, you know, new to V-Ray was asking if you could spend some moments on the MPR features. And I know we went, you know, we're already uh, running a little bit over time allotted to us. So is, is there a place where this person could go and uh, check out the NPR features, like maybe the, um, the YouTube channel? Sorry, which features? The NPR features. And NPR. I, NPR. I don't know what he meant, but if you if you want to, uh, Graham, talking to you, if uh, if you wanna explain to us, what did you mean? I will will be waiting. Ah, uh, non photorealistic. Ah, uh, non photorealistic non rendering. Okay, basically it's rendering where you can go and um, cartoon. He you says. Ah, uh, very cartoon. Uh, there is an option to go in with the V-Ray 2 material which allows you to set an overall environment effect, creating sort of a toony strokes, let's name them. And of course you can also just adjust the materials and lights to represent more toony kind of an environment. Basically you can use the RT to check out how everything is going. But this can be uh, V-Ray for two non-photorealistic rendering options. This can be a whole new webinar. Okay, good. So check the YouTube channel, a lot of videos there, definitely. Okay. Will one be able to click in Render Preview window and have the material highlighted in the shader tree? Uh, no, this is for the RT at this point. Uh, this is not available. Uh, we have some developments going on in that direction. I'm pretty sure about that, but I cannot give a time frame about this one. Okay. So for now, you cannot select material from the rendering from the RT. Okay. How is the progress with implementing Modo's procedu procedural textures? Um, Falker um, says, yeah, he finds himself struggling with the onboard V-Ray textures since the documentation isn't that detailed. Yeah. I know this. Uh, we are very heavily developing in that direction. But uh, by the way, the main developer or V-Ray for Modo writes constantly in the Foundries forum and in Chaos Group's forum for Modo. So there you can get in touch with the kitchen exactly. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Kalina. That was it for the questions. I'm Thank you so much. Hope it was yeah. a great experience for everybody. Uh, thank you for, so much for your time and hope to see you again. Yeah, we hope to see you too. Hope we gave you uh, the, you know, the feedback for a new presentation was, uh, you know, 
made you <laughs> give, gave you some ideas. I want to also thank everybody for attending, and I want to remind everyone to visit our webpage at novage.com, where you can find the entire line of V-Ray, including the new V-Ray for Moto. Novage is the best way to buy design software online, so it's really easy to find the product and look at the pricing, but if you still have questions, you can always call us and there will be somebody, you know, looking forward to talk to you. And for information mm -hmm. on latest spe specials and new releases, join the Novage Network. And don't forget, the next week's webinar is about uh, Real Flow for Cinema 4D, a great new workflow for fluid simulation. To rewatch today's webinar or previous ones, check out the Novag YouTube and Vimeo channels. Our webinar playlist has webinars for every software taste. Today's webinar is number 211, so um, have fun. And thanks again, everybody. Thank you so much, Kalina. Um, enjoy the Thank rest of the much. night. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you.